welcome. It's the start of my Silver Flames vlog. And I'm just chilling today. I'm waiting for my boyfriend to return because he said he needed the car and I said you better be back at 5 p.m. when I finish work because I'm going to Barnes and Noble at that very specific time. I'm just so excited. I Okay, so here's the story. I have three copies on the way, two of which are going to the wrong address. So because they're going to the wrong address, I actually don't know when I will be getting them. So I decided I'm just gonna go to the store and buy a copy there and uh, call it a day. If need be, I will return the other copies that I get in the mail, but just because of like the whole mail situation, I just like really don't know when I'm going to be getting those copies. So I feel like I just might as well go and get one today and start my vlog. Other than that, I have been just transferring annotations from this copy of Kingdom of Flesh and Fire to this copy of Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I'm giving this one to a friend, so I want to make sure that I still have my annotations. And it's kind of cool passing on an annotated book to a friend. I have my whole key here. I still haven't done an annotation video. I should probably do that one day. But yeah, I just want to make sure that, like... I have my own annotations. My copy of From Blood and Ash is actually not annotated because I read it on Kindle because I didn't know I was going to love it so much. I was like, I'll just try this one on Kindle. The ebook was on sale and that ended up being my favorite book of the year. So now I have like 10 editions on the way from all the different book boxes. So I'm going to update you as I go along my journey. have it i have retreated into the bedroom for quiet and told people that i'm not to be disturbed so i can read this oh my god i'm so excited and it's literally huge it's huge oh my god, it feels so good in my hands and it's like the pages are definitely not as thick as akamaf but also like not as thin as Echo War, so we actually get like a thick book that feels as thick as it really is, you know? So anyways, I'm just gonna dig into this and I'm like, I'm so nervous. This vlog is going to be spoiler free. So you're just gonna get my reactions, but no spoilers. And then at the end, I will do like a spoiler section with like my actual thoughts on the book. That way people can watch up to a certain point and then it'll kind of like turn into a book talk-ish type vlog so this isn't a spoiler or anything because it's literally the dedication page but one of the theories is that ness is gonna have to do the blood right and climb the mountain and the dedication says for every ness out there climb the mountain oh my god if the theory's right i'm gonna lose it i'm gonna lose it okay time to actually start reading Oh my god, oh my god, okay. I want to do a tense. So it's a third person, which is what Dark Glasses and third person, right? So only Echo Tar was in first. Would make sense because we have more characters that we need to follow. We need an omnipotent presence. Okay, yeah, I'm going to start reading. Okay, so it's like 10 p.m. and I'm on page. <laughs> What page am I on? 145, so we're making progress. I literally wish I had the time to sit here and read this book in one sitting because it's so good. I just want to consume it, even though I have a terrible headache because for some reason these glasses are, I don't know, they're just like not, they don't feel good, I think. Okay, so I bought glasses that are the exact same as these. I think I put on the ones of my old script because I don't think that they're strong enough. But whatever. So I'm just gonna keep reading, even though I have a headache. I want to read more than anything right now. I do have to get up early for work. I've been working from home, so usually I just roll out of bed at nine. But I'm actually going on site tomorrow, so I actually need to be up earlier. Let myself stay up late because that's what coffee was invented for. And then I'm gonna be at work all day tomorrow thinking about this book, and then I'm gonna come home and be like tired, but want to read it anyways. That's 
the plan. But yeah, so like, there's just like so much angst in the first 150 pages. Like we don't necessarily get like a lot of where the plot is going in terms of the whole world, but it's really just focusing on Nesta and Cassie and kind of their like internal damage. And like Nessa definitely has like a well of damage and that she obviously deals with in unhealthy ways because of her character. So um it's interesting to see it and i saw some people on tiktok the first six chapters were leaked and people were like the inner circle is so toxic blah blah blah. i don't really see that and i don't really see the way that they stage their intervention as toxic because it's not like nesta was living her life on her own terms with these destructive behaviors like if she continues on this path like she's going to harm herself and she needs other people to intervene like that's the whole point of an intervention but also she was doing this on reese and Vera's money so like they kind of have the right to say that we're not funding this lifestyle anymore and they're obviously doing it for the greater good so like i don't really see it as problematic like Reese was being a bit of an asshole because he can be a bit of an asshole, but like some people were like, Reese is so toxic, I hate him now. And I'm like, I don't quite get it. I don't quite get it. But yes, okay. Look at this orange beauty. It's, it's very orange, but I love it. Okay, the Illumicrate cover though, I'm so excited. Okay, well, back to reading until I can no longer stay awake and then I'm gonna be tired tomorrow. But Okay, so I got to page 345. I literally, I would like just not sleep and read this all night if I could. But I have like a job and I need to get up early. There's already been like three significant smut scenes and I'm only halfway through. And they are so good. Like finally, as Miss SJM would say herself, she snapped the leash that she was on <laughs> and she gave us the smut that we have been waiting for. It's so good. It's so good. But like also the plot, I have a feeling a lot of people in reviews are going to say nothing happened and it's slow moving, which that's valid if you feel that way. For me, we're definitely just the first half of this book seems to be very focused on the healing from the trauma and I think that we're going to get more plot building in the second half but this the structure of this definitely reminds me a lot of Aquamath more than any of her other books just because it is dealing with like emotional healing also I have some side characters that are new that I just like absolutely adore and we're seeing new sides of Nesta and I just appreciate what this book is doing so far. <sighs> and it's definitely kind of going in a different direction than I thought it would but I don't hate it. But I, from what has been set forth in the first half of this book, I don't see this ending in one book. Like I definitely think the next books in this series are going to follow the same storyline but maybe focusing on a different character each time so i think it's going to be interesting to see how that goes where like the general plot is moving forward but focus on a different character and their journey each time and like literally anytime there's like an elaine asriel karam i'm literally like oh my god ilario because <laughs> i ship them together so hard like yeah obviously i ship nessian because <laughs> this whole book is about them but but elaine and asriel's like that maybe ship and i want that ship to sail like, i don't want her with lucian and like there's been like no mentions of her and lucian like interacting so i just have to say gwen is my new fave i just love her and she reminds me of elizabeth from sorcery of thorns which is my favorite I don't know, I just have a feeling I'm just going to like completely adore the heck out of this book when I finish. I mean like I already adored the heck out of it from the first half. Like finally we don't get fade to black scenes, like full smut, full smut, thank you. Thank you. Just thank you. You've been waiting. And this just makes me think that like her crescent city like subsequent novels might be more smutty they might also not be more smutty like they will have some smut but not as smutty as this just because i think this is like more so the fantasy romance but anyways 
I need to go to bed now because I have to get up in a few short hours. Oh, uh, I definitely stayed up too late, but it's fine. It's worth it for when your most anticipated book of the year comes out. So, see you guys tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next day. I got home from work, exercised. I'm eating an Oreo. I got like halfway through last night. <laughs> My plan was to just like read this all night tonight and maybe finish it. I have to get up really early for work tomorrow, so I just like don't see that being in the cards for me. However, I'm going to sit down and start for the evening. I'm just kind of procrastinating starting this, not really for any real reason besides the fact that I needed like an hour to just zone out, which all of the sexy scenes are tabbed on the top. That way they're there for a quick reference if I want to reference back to them. No shame. Um, apparently, while I was off TikTok yesterday reading this book there was a whole thing like i'm i just kind of do tiktok like ancillary to this like tiktok is not my main platform like it is for some people booktube is but it seems there's sjm controversy which there always is and she's not perfect she's definitely done some things wrong but is it like malicious i don't think so i just don't think we need to like fight and go after people that like a author or a creator Okay, I would like to really start to read my book. So I'm sure that my dog seems like he's about to cause trouble. Which is how it usually goes. Yeah, he probably wants to go out. So I'll take him out before I get settled down. And then I'll settle in for the night and then I'll just read as far as I can. If I get to like 75%, I feel like that's solid. And then I'll finish the book up tomorrow. But like, I might also just stay up super late because I can't stop reading. I don't know. Keep you updated. It is almost 2 a.m. So I really need to go to bed, but I am on page, what page? 522. I mean, this book is literally everything so far. The way that Sarah J. Mass describes PTSD and healing from trauma just really pulls at the heartstrings. Um, it's kind of gone in like a different direction than my predictions, but I still love it. And I feel like we get this whole new plot line introduced to the world, which is exciting. So there's new adventures to be had. I mean, it's just, it's very touching. I love the side characters that are Nesta's friends. And that's all I'm going to say about them. They're her friends and like they just add like another layer to the story. Gwen is my homegirl. I love her. Yeah, I'm really tired, so I don't have any coherent thoughts, but this book is just, it's amazing. Say hi. <laughs> He's over it. <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> something funny happened. Let me share. So here we have my copy of A Court of Silver Flames that I went to the store to purchase on release day, because I wanted it on release day. <laughs> And then the next day, this shows up to my new apartment, addressed to this apartment. And the reason I had gone to the store to get it is because I thought I had pre-ordered it to my old apartment, and I was like, I don't know when I'm going to get it with mail forwarding. Well, this box just arrived from Martha Noble, and it is the third copy that was mailed to my old address that got forwarded right away to here. Um, I'm not even gonna bother to take it out of the box because I'm obviously gonna go and return these, but basically I didn't keep track of anything. And now I have three copies of the same exact book. But they're not even different editions. <laughs> but anyways, I will be returning two of these copies and just keeping one because I do have different editions on the way. And I'm going to finish the last 200 pages or so tonight. Okay, first of all, like, it's dirty and I love it, but like more importantly than that is Nesta's character development. And I feel like we really just get such a look into her character and like she has dealt with her emotions in very toxic and negative ways that affect the people around her negatively. And seeing her having to work through all of that is just like, it's so, it's just done so well. And I feel like traumatic things happen in fantasy books right like the stakes are so high we have like life or death battles and a lot of the times the actual trauma that like would occur if that were to happen to in someone like an emotional being like a human is not explored to its full depth and in these books it definitely is and i think that the mental health 
rep is just really great and I am going to keep reading and there are some things that I hope happen in the last 200 pages or so that fingers crossed and I think that we are going to get um, a chapter from Azrael's perspective I think in the book itself I think there's also a bonus chapter I just finished um, and I looked up and it's 4 a.m. 4 a.m. but I literally I thought this book was absolutely perfect it might be my favorite Sarah J Mass book now I literally feel like I'm gonna be in like the biggest book hangover book slump because that was just like absolutely brilliant the way that she deals with Nessa's trauma is just so uh, it's so good and what's really interesting to me is that this novel reads like a standalone i mean obviously it's part of a series but definitely these upcoming novels are going to be more like anthology stories following each character because this novel wraps up like very succinctly i can't even tell from anything in here like well there's like one storyline that i think will like probably continue on into the next book but I think the groundwork for the other books that will follow is probably more in A Court of Frost and Starlight and not in this book really at all. Like nothing nothing else was really like hinted at, nothing new. So that's interesting, but I just like I'm in awe of like the fact that this was a series that had not planned to have any more novels and yet Sarah J. Mouse was able to like create this book. This book is about a book. favorite quote it's, it was just so beautiful and like i was tearing up and at many points throughout this book and the friendships were really like some of the things that i wasn't expecting in this book that i found um i love gwen and emer emery and yeah i mean just like everything about it i'm going to sit down and do like a more thorough talk with spoilers but this is like still my non-spoiler vloggy section um just like a little mini wrap up on my thoughts but that's clearly not happening now because it's 4 a.m and the fact that i put on this makeup at 7 a.m and it still looks somewhat okay at 4 a.m yeah okay okay that's that's not too bad <laughs> i'm like not coherent anymore i really just need to go to sleep Oh lord, oh man, wow. I just feel like, like uh, it was just so good. Like I just feel like seen and I don't think that the trauma in this book is like something, even if it's not something that I like directly relate to having experienced in my own life, there are still aspects of the way that the emotions are processed and the way that I guess kind of Nessa like feels about herself, like it just, I don't know it just speaks to me and I think that everyone can take something away from this book in terms of its portrayal of mental health and that's the, that's the thing that always gets me about her books too like this one definitely kind of I think Nessa more so reminds me of Aelin in the fact that she is very like fierce and this book definitely oh no I really want to reread Throne of Glass but this book definitely Reminded me of Air Fire, for sure. Five stars. That's I mean, as of right now, best book of the year. I don't know if anything that's coming out this year will literally top that because that was just incredible. Okay, I need to go to sleep now. Good night. Okay, so this is going to be the ending portion of this video, and it's going to be spoiler filled. So if you don't want spoilers, please exit. Okay, so let's talk about everything that happened in this book. It's been a few days since I finished so I can finally uh, process my feelings, but I mean, I just loved everything about this. The character development, like the smut, oh my god. It's like Sarah J Mass. she was able to write all the smut that she ever wanted. I have all the scenes tapped. 
so I can go back to them at my leisure. I feel like a common complaint might be that it was like maybe too focused on the character development and the plot lacked a little bit. And like while I can see where that complaint comes from and it's like a valid complaint, I personally just love Nesta's journey and I love that she really found a way to heal herself through exercise and training to be a Valkyrie. Um, as someone that likes to exercise and has use exercise as an outlet for any sort of mental distress that I've been feeling it throughout my life. I liked seeing how training made her strong um, and I've done like powerlifting in the past and right now I've been doing a lot of boxing and so that's really something that I relate to with her character um, and it made me want to become a Valkyrie like I would like to become one. Where do I sign up? I love that Nesta, Emery, and Gwyn kind of carve this own area for themselves in life um okay let's see what other theories are there to talk about okay so a few theories that i've heard and these are not my ideas i've heard them around tiktok and stuff like that the dread trove there was a fourth object that they couldn't see someone pointed out that it maybe was the horn because the horn we don't know what it was made out of um from crescent city and this is crescent city spoiler so just skip while i have my hand up um the horn was in bryce so bryce became the horn so they couldn't see it because it was bryce and all of sergeant mass's worlds are on top of each other okay that part's over um so i don't know what the you know thing could be i feel like because of az's extra chapter at the end of the books a million edition um there's a lot of debate on like you know like who as is gonna end up with and you know me like i've been like a hardcore ride or die illyrial stan like i that is my ship i want them together and Sarah Janess has kind of changed my mind in like a few pages. <laughs> I don't know. I like because there's also a potential for Gwyn and As to get together. And the more I see about this ship, the more that I like it. And this is because like Azrael shadows disappear when Elaine is there. And we thought that maybe it was a good thing. But then someone's like maybe the shadows are hiding. Or like she's using her abilities to block As's abilities. And she's actually going to be like a villain. And someone said that Lucian and Elaine are going to go rule the Spring Court. I just don't know where it's going to go and I feel like her storyline is going to have to go in some unexpected directions because there's no there is nothing very prevalent about her at this moment that could set up for the type of like journey that Feyre has gone on and Nessa has gone on and even like Elaine and Bryce like their journeys like they, her books always focus on mental health journey. and Elaine right now she has some trauma she has some things to work through but i don't see like like i just don't see enough to make the whole book about her so like i'm really interested to see like where it's going to go but i definitely think the next book is going to be about Azrael because we got his extra bonus chapter at the end and finally got into his head and i for one was just excited to see that like he actually wanted elaine because i think like we have been grasping at straws like does az have a crush on elaine like is he still so hung up on more he won't acknowledge it and in the chapter he like fully was like i want elaine and then reese was like no you can't do that that'll mess some shit up and then he sees gwen on the roof and like they have this conversation and she's like oh like shadow singer like do you sing and then he asks her if she sings and like so someone had a theory that they were mates and now i'm like mm, what if they are he gave her the necklace that he meant to give elaine for christmas and then elaine gave it back uh let's see so like that's a potential but like it, i feel like i could go either way like if either ship ends up happening i would be okay with it with more i think there was like a tiny tiny hint of more and emery in there and i would love to see it personally i also think that maybe like she's doing something in Valhallen or maybe the um Vivian's sister really did anyone else catch that Vivian is pregnant so like there's going to be a winter court heir as well that could be something we could play out and now you know Farrah and Reese have their child Nyx which is cool uh, I'm trying to think what else is like relevant in the story I don't know I just loved it so much I just loved it so much it so oh the cut threesome scene was definitely Nesta as and Cassian because Nesta has a brief moment where she fantasizes about it that was the easter egg that we were looking for I thought it would have been a male female female threesome okay let's see oh I don't know it's just a precious beautiful journey I want to reread it over and over I'm really glad that I you know I'm on booktube and I get to document my experiences with these kinds of things because I still go back now and watch my Throne of Glass reading vlog where I read the whole series for the first time, which 
I feel like a reread might be on the horizon. I just feel it in my bones, you know? I just, I don't know, I'm just like really glad I got to have all my thoughts out there on the internet to discuss. I'm trying to think of like other theories that we can discuss about how things are gonna go down. I thought it was interesting, like, kind of how like swiftly this threat was dealt with. Like, I thought it was gonna maybe, and I get that like each character kind of gonna have their own arc, and we still have Koshe in the, is that how you say it? I don't know, in the lake, and obviously everything with Vasa and Jurian like hasn't really been dealt out. I don't think the other queens besides Brylin, that just sounds like such like a, you know, like those. <laughs> that meme about like some names that are spelled in like really weird ways, but they're like normal names. Like that's what Brylin reminds me of. <laughs> Anyways, so I, yeah, I'm just like not sure. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Um, something that really like struck a note with me is the fact that the first person that Nessa ever says I love you to in her life is Feyre when Feyre is dying and. Nessa saves her and by giving up her magic. It just makes me so emotional to think about because of that like sisterly bond and how Nessa just thinks that Feyre doesn't love her, she doesn't deserve Feyre's love. <sighs> it's just, oh, This whole book, man, just really like, it really talks about how like sometimes holding on to these like toxic emotions can turn you into a toxic person and how to heal from that. And I, I think it just really discusses like how how sometimes when you're hurting yourself, you hurt other people, even if you don't mean to, but you just need to shut everyone out and that's your coping mechanism and how it can harm the people around you and just a beautiful story of like recovery and oh, I didn't touch upon like the biggest spoiler that I need to talk about. I knew Nesna and Cassian were mates and I kind of loved the way that it went about it in this book because it just felt like it came about like very naturally almost were like they both knew but they denied it like they didn't want to think about it but they knew like there was a moment when the mating bond had snapped into place and they both kind of denied it and then there was this one scene where like she accepts him but not like all the way and you can tell that like that's the mating bond like solidifying okay the whole blood right which i had a feeling they were gonna go into the blood right like i just loved it so much like, they were just so badass and they just like killed everyone in their path and i want to be a valkyrie i want to be a valkyrie I need to gather my thoughts because we have our live show and next month and it's going to be in mid-March and I'm so excited to discuss this book with everyone and I've just loved doing this live show like in general. Thank you for coming along with me on this vlog, on this journey. Let me know what you thought of this book down below and yeah I just want to discuss this with everyone because it's my new favorite thing ever and I'm never going to shut up about it. Have a fun, read some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one.